the, a group of graduate students, uh, some of whom, are, a number of whom are here, and that you know have studied the glaives. Tom Hemmerley, for example, is one who's just has done a tremendous amount of experimental work on certain species in the glaives. And um, um, Carol Baskin and Jerry Baskin, mm -hmm. in addition to Barbara Turner, students of mine. We then both worked with Dr. Quarterman. We, we had our own independent research projects and we did a lot of field trips together. In fact, she used to loan us her car. I we would, car. Uh, I lived on campus and Jerry lived nearby and we would come to campus and she would come to campus and then we would take her car and go to Northwest Georgia or Northern Alabama and field trip for a whole day and try to get the car back so she could go home at a decent <laughs> hour. I, I think it's a tragedy that more people, for example, in Nashville and Murfreesboro are not aware of what a garden the glades are and that they don't know about it and, and don't really take advantage of enjoying something that's right here. And I think education, just making people aware of what they have right here why travel to the Smokies to go to a wildflower event when you've got gorgeous things right here? These central basin cedar glades are by far and away the most, uh, most important in this overall ecosystem. They're the most widespread, they have the most diverse flora, and, and they have more of the southeastern cedar glade endemics than any other uh, state. So when I decided to do my doctoral studies, I. Um, went to Vanderbilt and asked Dr. Corwin if I could study with her. One reason being that uh, I had had courses at Peabody under uh, Donald Kapliner, who was her first doctoral student. So I'd been in introduced to her through Donald Kapliner. And uh, when I began to select a, um, a problem for my doctoral research, um, the Tennessee coneflower was mentioned as a possibility because it had been thought to be extinct for several years and then a new population not known to exist had just been discovered. And then from there we discovered some additional populations and so I had something to work with. The Nature Conservancy has been around since the early 1950s. The Tennessee chapter got established in 1978 so we just recently celebrated our 25th anniversary and one of our very first Board of Trustee members was Dr. Oh, Elsie yes. Quarterman. <laughs> she was in Nashville at the time and she she got on our Board of Trustees and was really instrumental in raising the profile of the importance of glade conservation in Tennessee and encouraged the chapter to um, acquire cedar glade properties to protect them. Um, also encouraged the state um, Department of Environment and Conservation and Natural Areas program to buy and protect these places. So she was one that really got our organizations moving to, pr to preserve these places, and we're still, we're still working on it today. Uh, well, what is special about today, I realized when I came in to the round table and was sitting in the room in the presence of all these people, and I looked down at my calendar, and I realized that today was May 11th, and it's, it's, it's 10 years to the day that I got my graduate degree from UNC Chapel Hill. And my master's project there was on the Sear Glades, and it was based on all the work and all the assistance that I got from the majority of the people in the room. And in all those years, when I, when I was first doing my project and then up until today, I've never actually been in the same room with all of those people at one time. So it was really neat to be sitting there and realizing, gosh, it's my 10-year anniversary. <laughs> all graduate students that, that do just a little bit, add that little bit to the whole story. Barbara Turner, she's now dead, but Barbara, she was a bacteriologist when she came to graduate school at Vanderbilt. And she got so fascinated with the Glade situation. She said that there's this great big thing that spreads flat on the ground and once in a while, the little white 
flowered plant comes in, grows right in among it. Then there are other places where you can't make the little white flowered plant grow within that limit. She wanted to know why. So she began to study soil, not just the chemistry, although she did that, but she discovered that the big purple flowered <coughs> petalostomum produced a growth inhibitor that would prevent the seeds of many things from germinating. The size of the soil particles was very prominent in determining whether or not the two species could grow side by side and intermingled with each other. And that was, that impressed some of the, <laughs> of the chemists over at Vanderbilt. Uh, <laughs> you know, I hate to say this, but uh, lots of people at, teaching at Vanderbilt just didn't see going out in the woods and looking at anything and <laughs> digging in the dirt to see what was going on was research, but we began to break into things a bit when the chemistry department got interested. 